Hello YouTube, this is Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales, and welcome to a faction overview video. And in this week's video, we will be looking at the Iceni tribe of Great Britain, or Britannia. So here we are, this is the faction selection screen. I'm on the Iceni tribe already. I'm basically described by, oh god, I can't pronounce that, Phytheus as Pretanoi, or Pretani, the painted ones, basically. These Celts are a fierce and independent people from the island of High Britannia, or Britannia. They were hard to pacify after a widespread rebellion led by Boudicca. So, fierce independence, they have plus 10% melee damage for all units during battle in own or allied territory. And they have Warrior Society, which is a plus one public order for every war against a neighbouring faction. So basically, when you're playing as the Iceni tribe, the more wars you declare, the better your public order will, will of course, grow. So that's, the, that's the, some of the traits that you have. At the bottom, Children of Andraste, so a plus 10% charge bonus for all units when attacking. Yearning for home, so there's a minus 5% morale penalty when fighting in enemy or neutral territory. So don't like to be too far away from home. And cultural aspiration, so moderate diplomatic bonus with all non-barbarian tribes, cultural affinity. Like all the tutorials that I do, and like all of the faction overviews that I do, I'm going to put this on hard. I usually play on very hard or legendary, but for the purpose of this, I'm just going to go on to hard. The initial challenge for the Icing is easy, so this is a good faction to play as if you're brand new to Total War Rome 2 and you're thinking about starting a new campaign. Definitely recommend starting with the Icing. I had a fun campaign when the game was first released with the Icing tribe myself. And um, without further ado, we're going to click the start campaign button. And the campaign will of course begin so basically what i'm going to do in this video and what i'm going to do in all of my overview overview videos is start a campaign go over what i think works for the faction what i think some of the good units are for that faction some decent strategies maybe have a battle as well and show you what I'll, I'll do in that battle so it's going to be a bit of everything it's kind of like watching somebody start a brand new campaign but they actually go through all the the ins and outs and the kind of trail of thought that what they're thinking of so it's, a it's a basic kind of overview of the faction that's what i'm aiming to do in these videos i'm going to do them for every single faction in total war room 2 i'm also going to do it for every single faction in total war attila when that game is out and i'm going to do it for some of the previous games like shogun 2 and medieval 2 as well so lots and lots of videos to look forward to if you're into this uh, sort of thing but this is icini so if you're watching this video i'm assuming you're a big fan of the icini so hello there hello fans of icini how are you <laughs> Yeah, so I think probably in the future videos I will cut out the loading screens as well. But for the purpose of this, I'm just going to keep it in for the first one and see how we do. There we go. So this is what the campaign is like as it starts up. Any second now. Come yeah, on. Here we go. Your people are warriors. Okay, I'm just going to, to live in harmony with your king. The Demeter text only. Chosen to skip past that. We. Basically, that comes up in every single video, um, every single faction that you play as in the top right corner, top left corner. Sorry, we're going to ignore it. It just basically introduces you to the to the game, to the faction, and what your kind of diplomatic status is as you begin the campaign. So straight away, we have objective issued. So basically, what they are offering us in this first stage is to control eight settlements, either by direct ownership or through military allies. If we do that, then we get a two thousand five hundred pound or denarii bonus. Now we start off at Camelodonum. It's our capital. We start off with Adiatrix or Adiatrix, and we also start off with another army here, Dagomaras or Dagomaros. Now straight away, you will notice that we have two mercenary spear bands. What I'm going to do is disband them. They are a waste of money. And if you have a look, that's 120 we're paying every turn for them. Whereas Levy Freeman, which are only slightly worse than them, base morale slightly less, melee attack slightly less, and charge bonus. More or everything else is pretty much the same, and you're paying only 60 for them. I'd rather have two units, I could have two units of Levy Spearmen. Well, actually, I could have three units of Levy Spearmen for what it would take for one of these. So, oh, shit, what have I done? I'm going to disband two of them and if you look keep your eye on the bottom right corner our money just went up look at that 1433 per turn we just saved ourselves some money now of course the border shirt and we do start off at war with the Demetai in Wales which uh, is of course is a bad thing 
Now, I, I do believe the Demetai, they actually start off in this settlement, so we don't have to worry too much about moving back or anything. So what we want to do, like I said, Levy Freeman, we can get a few of them. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually recruit three of them, like I said. And that gives us pretty much the same thing as what would have happened with just with just the mercenaries. So that's our first kind of port, uh, port of call. We have a spy, Latikos. Now, the spy, I could go towards Wales, but I'm actually going to send him north. Because eventually we would end up going to war against the Brigantes in Eboracon. So I'd like to know where they are, because they sometimes declare war on you. Now, of course, Camelodonum. We can expand. We also can upgrade our port, and we can upgrade our settlement. These are all things we can do in the opening turn. So what we're going to do first of all is check our diplomacy. Toggle. So the Damoni in the south are okay with us. They're actually the same blood, and they're actually happy with us. Now, what I think is a good idea with the Iceni, and that's how I started my Iceni campaign, is to actually try and get a non-aggression pact with them, which is low at the moment. I wonder if we can get trade with them. That's low as well. Okay, so we can't do that at the moment, but it's something to try and aim for in this campaign. Because if we can get them on our good side, then we can eventually attack the other factions as well. So we can't do anything diplomatically at the moment. We are planning to take a Moradon on straight away and then a Boracon there. Now what we need to do in our settlement, of course, we need to expand the undeveloped land. So we've got an extra building slot. And we need to look at what would be useful. So we haven't got any mercen uh, mercenary any kind of farms so our food would be low so enclosed land for the four food would be probably beneficial especially if I'm gonna have big armies but on top of that we could have a craftsman house which would give us Britain skirmishers which is a bit pointless when you consider we already have Britain slingers um, we can have a warrior lodge which um, allows me to have a plus one army recruitment which isn't really worth it as far as I'm concerned. And we can have an artisan's lodge in, which is worth sword band unit. Now if we right click on that and bring it up. We'll have a little look at this. Uh, oh god, what happened? Have a little look at this now. So here we go. Sword band. As you can see. So we bring it up. That's what the sword band looks like. That's what they are. And as you can see, they're a pretty decent infantry unit. They're a good attack, an average defense. Normal morale, average damage, but low armor penetration. They're a decent unit to go for, so I would definitely recommend getting an Artisan's Lodge in straight away. It'll take two turns, but that's fine. Technology is the other thing which must do with the Iceni, so check the, the technology. We're going to be fighting straight away. No point in worrying about civil until we've taken all of the British Isles, in my opinion. Because, more often than not, the Germanic factions and the Gaul factions won't attack you overseas. It, doesn't, it very rarely happens, especially in this stage of the campaign. Concentrate on consolidating all of the United Kingdom. That is definitely what you should aim for at the start of this campaign. So what we're going to do is actually go for, I think we're going to go for Siege or Warrior Code. Let's see. Four, minus four recruitment cost. Costs again. And then Agent and Recruitment cost. The upkeep. We don't want to worry about the naval stuff. Um, missile damage. And then we have Charge Bonus. That's what we want, Charge Bonus. We're going to be charging around a lot. We're going to be attacking quite a lot. So we're going to go for mass charge. It takes four turns to get that. It takes three turns to get battle fury, which will help with my missiles and the morale of my units. And then, of course, we get the two turns for the supply foraging. So that's what we're going to do initially in Camelodonum. Now, my other general is going to be building units here to end up attacking Eboracon. But before we do that, let's just double check how much it would cost to upgrade. It would cost 1,500 for a fisherman's hut or 1,600 for a harbour. Now, bear in mind, public order will go down minus one with a harbour, but it'll go down minus two with the fisherman hut. But the fisherman hut would give me plus six food, which would be worth it. So I'm thinking probably the harbour. Now, we'll go for the fisherman's hut. We'll go for the fisherman's hut. And we have 870 left over to spend, which we can spend on some units. So... Let's get a couple of levies. And we can actually afford three, so we'll go for that. And that is our first turn. So we're recruiting our first uh, unit there, our second unit there. We've upgraded Camelodonum a little bit. We've checked the diplomacy. I should just check the objectives just to give you guys a bit of an overview of our ultimate objective. So for a military victory, it would be to hold 80 settlements. Raise or sack 35 different settlements. 
completely control the following six provinces, which is Caledonia, Eteburnia, which is, of course, Ireland and uh, Scotland, Britannia, which is England and Wales, Aquitania, which is France, Swabia, Italy, and Carthaginus. An economic victory would be 50 settlements. It would be Reis or Sac 25, and it would be Britannia, Provincia, Raetia et Noricum, Asia, Mauritania, and Swabia. And then a cultural would be Britannia, Hellas, Magna, Germania, Macedonia, Italy, and Dacia. So a few different things um, for each one. It depends really what you go for. I don't tend to plan for any specific one. I just kind of play the campaign, and then whichever one I'm nearest to, I end up going for. So that's how I play a little look at the faction overview. So the Elder Chiefs, what we are, we have 58% Gravitas, or influence. Adiatorix, 12 Gravitas. He is our general, and he is our faction leader. He is 31 years of age. He's got a two ambition, and he's pretty much a base general. He has three in everything. Uh, and if you hover over this, it tells you what he has. So we've got a plus two public order, 10% morale, 10% melee, and 4% replenishment. So he's not too bad. And Dagomaros, who of course is our other general, he has some other traits as well. So you can hover over these and you can see for yourself. you got war cry, as you can see. It's important to double check these. Of course, you can check the politics. This will, of course, tell us where we are. So we are here at the moment, which isn't too bad. We are um, respected. The next one would be, I'm actually not sure what the next one See, respected, admired, beloved, exalted, and then peerless. So, yeah, that's basically that. This tells us what we currently have at the moment. But yeah, that's pretty much everything we need to worry about. At war with Demoni, uh, sorry, Demetai, we can have two. We can have four armies. We only have two at the moment. We can have a dignitary and a champion. We can have two fleets, and we can have an edict. So we could go for a fleet, perhaps. Although we need to get a port at the moment. We haven't got a port, so we can't do that yet. If we took Iska, we could, probably could. Actually, I think we can do it in Moradun, on as well. Um, we could raise another army. Not worth it at the moment. Two is enough. So what we're going to do is click end turn, and that's the first turn of the Iceni done. So this is how I would start off, or usually start off an Iceni uh, campaign. It has changed a little bit since all the patches and some of the DLC and stuff has been released, but it's pretty much the same as what I remember it to be. It's basically pl carefully plan. There we go, Latikos has been exposed. War declared between these guys and a Quartermaster's report. So our army now, we can be a bit more aggressive, I think. We've got... Quite a few units. We could, of course, get some cavalry and mercenary spear band, which may be worth going for eventually. We check again now. As you can see, one more turn for the sacred band, two more for the fisherman's hat, and we have over a thousand. So we're going to click on diplomacy again. And what we are going to do, Demoni, see if we can get that non aggression pact. It's still low. It's still not happening, is it? What about trade? It's not going to happen either. Nope. So maybe it's a waste of time trying to get something from them but maybe the germanic tribes would be worth a go we have the frisi in the north here in holland modern day holland they're not ha they're not having anything either and then the namites no so the thing is with these barbarians you have to kind of conquer a lot more than just have one uh, one settlement that's how it works really Hail to the mother. So what I'm going to do is actually go over the border. We are trespassing. Oh, shit. That's the other thing I forgot to mention. If you go over the border, you're actually trespassing because the border is like a... You know, to go over here, you have to go kind of around where that path is there. So basically, you have to trespass there or trespass here just to attack Moradunon. We'll ignore that. We're just going to charge straight in. They may come out and attack me. If they do, that would be great. We can get mercenary spear band, which I said is not worth it. And of course, mercenary Briton scout riders. <coughs> Pardon me. I think we've got enough to take them out with just the seven. Although I would advise to probably check with the spy, which I haven't done actually. I've gone north rather than down there. Although my my spy can get get quite close. Might find out what's there. Let's have a little look. What can we see? There we go. As expected, they only have six units there, and they are currently recruiting at the moment. So we can attack them next turn. And we'll have a battle. So that is basically what we would do there. And we are recruiting here, of course, as well. Before long, we'll have some more units. And that's basically it. It's, it's pretty much clicking the end turn button a few times and preparing yourself in the Iceni campaign. That's kind of what the faction overview is with them. 
Of course, later in the campaign, you can get the units like chariots, you can get scorpions. And look at this, the Demetai now have offered me a peace treaty and a hundred, which is not worth it, is it? I mean, I want to expand. They're expansionists themselves, so we're going to ignore that. Because they are weak and we got a chance to take them out, that's why they're offering that peace treaty, because they know that we can take them out relatively easily. So, again, we're going to jump straight in now. They've, of course, recruited a few more. They've got ten now. Now, my spy can be used. He can go for poison provisions for 348 denarii. So we will try that to see what happens. And it's successful. So there we go. We've weakened, weakened the main army there, the consorts of Morrigan. And my spy has leveled up. Nice bit of easy experience for him. And what we're going to do is give him plus one zeal. And my unit can actually attack. And we can besiege them. And of course, look at that. They have loads and loads. They have ships. They have the garrison, which isn't much of a garrison. But they have farmers and painted ones. And of course, their main army. We're going to encircle. And we are going to actually hire some mercenaries now. Which, of course, I said earlier on in the campaign, is not worth it. Um, it's not worth it, really. But I've actually gone myself into a situation where I didn't take enough units, probably. So probably worth doing it like that although nine units probably could be enough to take them out and now we have our artisans lodge in so what we can do now is actually recruit some sword band they have plus 25 melee attack which is better than levy freeman they have weapon damage is much better as 40 they don't have a bonus like the levy freeman do against oh god where's it gone oops let's see just says against large, doesn't say what. <laughs> oh well. Um, charge bonus is better, 25. Melee defense is slightly less. Armor is the same. Health is the same. And their morale is better. So as you can see, they are much better than Freeman. So we want to get some of them. Three of them would be nice. And then, of course, we can upgrade Camelodonum once more. Oh, we can't actually because we spent too much. But we could upgrade it to a bronze workshop to get more spear bands. We get, well, to get spear bands and a garrison of sword bands. We could get a horn maker to get a sword band garrison or a coin maker to get, again, to get the garrison of sword band. So it's totally up to you. I would could probably go with the bronze workshop. I know that leads to the ballistas. And again, we're going to click enter. And they might tally out and attack me this time. So we just wait and see what happens at this end of turn phase. There we go. And if, like, as expected, they've attacked me. And... You know, is it worth it attacking them now? There's only two of them attacking me this time. The ships are not there. And they are weakened relatively nicely for me. So we're going to fight this battle. So we'll click the assault button. There we go. Lovely. And there we go. This is our first battle to take Demetai. And this is basically what you should do in your campaign if you are playing as the Iceni. Always go and attack Demetai because you start off at war with them. Beware of the trespassing because that can cause problems. At the moment, the Demoni haven't actually attacked me, which is good. But my relations have probably deteriorated because I trespassed. So you have to be careful with that. The garrison won't cause me much of a problem. We've just got to worry about the spearmen, but we should be okay. So basically, we're just going to charge straight in. Oh, God. They've actually attacked us. Um, they've actually sallied out and attacked us. Got a nice hill to work with here. So what I'm going to do is actually get a, a nice group going on the hill. There we go, lovely. Get the spears, get the slinger, sorry, in front, and then the general on the flank. And we are currently all, can't be seen, which is nice. They are somewhere, where are they? We can't see them, probably because of the hill. This is good. In that case, we're gonna go to the top of the hill with my units, like so. Minimize that, and this is pretty good. They're going to be here somewhere. And guarantee they're going to be there somewhere. Over the top of this hill. If they're behind me, it'd be quite funny. <laughs> so yeah. Levy Freeman. Once you don't have any more Levy Freemans, don't worry about them. Because they are useless. Trust me. If you, if you can get sword banned, then you're, you're going to be fine. Pretty much. All you need to worry about is the sword band. There we go, nice little position in here. The 
the reinforcements are down there. We need to be quick about this, so let's actually go and be be very aggressive and take out some of their units. And we're actually going to lock my formation, holding control and G. And what we can actually do is give an attack order and they will walk and attack them there. I need to be careful because they have scout riders that have spotted me on the flank here. That is why I'm charging my units over the hill. They can't be seen at the moment. There we go. I think we've kind of trolled the, the scout riders to attack me. Giving myself a chance to get a good little charge in on the cavalry. Yes, just about. We're in there. We are getting hits on the cavalry. That worked out relatively well indeed. We've swarmed the cavalry. I'm actually going to push on with these two units. We've actually completely swarmed them. Sullingers! We're going to throw units in, and as you can see, they are routing now. They're going to be wa they are wavering, they're going to route, and they're gone. There we go, so they're gone. Exactly the same. Bit of a charge. Could do with some cavalry. That would make things much easier. Things would flow much better, but we are doing a relatively good job indeed. There we go. Get some hits on the Heroic Nobles. And my general can greet them. Go for headhunt. Swarm in with the rest of the troops and we can break them. There we go, lovely. Get my slingers into a good position. They are reforming up on this flank, so I'm going to have to be very careful indeed. Although killing the general right now would be very nice for me indeed. Bit of a war cry. Huzzah! There we go. They are now pushing towards me. Pull my Levy Freeman back. Slingers. What do they have? They have slingers, painted ones, freemen. Some more slingers and some farmers at the back. Farmers won't be a problem for me. You don't need to worry about chasing the slingers down. I need to bring my men back now to form up. And they're taking forever. The nobles are very strong. They do my head in, to be honest with you. There we go. Going to charge in now. We hunger for blood and battle. Charge! Missile warriors! Sling the farmers. Actually, no, sling the painted ones. There we go, jump in like that. Look at this, the heroic nobles. This is how good they are. They're holding up four units. And one of them is my general, who is also heroic nobles. Just shows you how strong they actually are. We are actually a bad way in this battle at the moment. I'm not doing too good. I'm having to pull units out from this fight. As you can see, they are routed now. Getting chased away by farmers. <laughs> and most of my men are starting to rout. And this just goes to prove my point why you can't... You know, you can't go in unprepared like I have. This is why it is important to prepare for the battle against the Demetai. Because they are a strong foe. My general's leveled up a little bit. Give a bit of a war cry. Hold up some of these free men units. And look at this. Farmers are actually doing a relatively good job against me here. Slinging them in the back while we hold them up with my uh, levy freemen. My general is doing all of the work. He's probably got the most kills as well. He's got 72 kills. And still, their heroic nobles won't rout. And again, this proves my point how strong they actually are. And this unit have actually chased them off. My own mistake, really. I shouldn't have, shouldn't have chased them, really. But it doesn't matter. So I'm obviously going to lose this fight. But it's to prove a point, And I think the point's been made that you can't really go in unprepared against uh, the Demetai. That's why you have to prepare. I'm still struggling to defeat the nobles. Have a quick look at the camera to see the battlefield. So as you can see, this is what the battlefield looks like. We're up here, we're chasing down this unit of Britain Slingers, right up to the border. Our general is caught 
in the middle. He's outflanked completely, and he's of course going to die. And then we have units being chased off the field in both directions. That's what the battlefield looks like. That's exactly what has happened. General's completely surrounded. He's going to get killed. Turn headhunt on to see if he can get a few more kills for us. I'm actually going to tell my units to charge because they are farmers. Although they do have some painted ones behind them. <laughs> and then of course we have our unit up here that is killing the Britonic Slingers. I'm actually going to fast forward this I think. And they still can't divide the two generals who are fighting each other. 30 against 24. I'm actually going to fast forward this now guys. There we go. That's the end of the battle pretty much I think. Yeah there we go. So close to defeat. Obviously I could have won that battle. I made some big errors and having the reinforcements definitely helped them because I defeated the first wave but the second wave of course was was too much to bear especially with those damn farmers but that pretty much shows you what the the campaign is like with the Iceni. It's, it's a big infantry battle. Upgrade to sword units as quickly as you can because those levy freemen are terrible. Spear units. You need spear band and sword band. That is what you need in this campaign. And of course... You know, Moradunon, it might take you a couple of turns, but it is worth it in the end. So we need a new general. This is the other thing I should mention before I end the video. With your generals, I found it's probably best to get chariots because they're more versatile and you can do more with them on the battlefield than you can with an infantry unit. It's like having an extra uh, cavalry unit, basically. And that's basically it. That is basically the overview of the Iceni tribe. It's difficult, but once you've taken Moradunon, you can then decide whether to go to Eboracon, scout it out with your spy first, or go south and try and take Iska. Once you've got all four of these, push on north, take Eildon, and sail across and take this settlement over here. And once you've done that, you can just concentrate for the next 10, 15 turns, just upgrade everything, get the best farms, get the best settlements, get as many units as you can, produce lots of food, just do whatever you can. Take, you know, even get one of your buildings to recruit lots of lots of artillery, like ballistas and scorpions. That's when you want to start your invasion. You can sail from Calamelodonon and go to uh, Flevum there. That's probably a good place to go to. Or maybe go to Nemesotun. Oh my god. Nemetosena. Maybe take that. You know, it's, it's up to you. You can, even, you can even create your own kind of, you know, go all the way past France and go into Spain. It's totally up to you. The world is your oyster once you've taken all of Britain. And that's the Iceni tribe in a nutshell. So I hope you've enjoyed. I hope this little tutorial slash overview has been helpful. If it has, that's fantastic. You know, I'm doing my job right. <laughs> um, leave, leave a comment if you need any more help. I'll try my best to help you in the comment section. And if you want a follow-up video to this, by all means, I'll make a follow-up video. So, I've been Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales. Thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.